Hello and welcome, it's Dr. Sun. Today we are going to talk about the epiphrenic diverticulum, a case study. Introduction Epiphrenic diverticulum it is formed due to the outpouching of the esophageal mucosa and it is rarely symptomatic. Esophageal diverticulum are located above the LES, means the lower esophageal sprinter, within the 10 cm of the distal esophagus. Most of the epiphrenic diverticulum occurs in the right posterolateral wall of the lower third of the esophagus. However, in this case, the diverticula observed in the right anterolateral wall 3 cm above the LES. Diverticula are mostly asymptomatic, but some patients have the symptom like dysphagia, regurgitation, epigastric and retrosternal pain, halitosis, heartburn, weight loss, nausea and vomiting, and also respiratory infections. Diverticula may occur due to esophageal dysmotility disorder, mainly caused by achalasia cardia. Epiphrenic diverticulum occurs commonly with the achalasia in the 60% of cases. Now the presentation of the case. A 50-year-old man, former with the complaints of epigastric discomfort, mild hiccup and cough with progressive dysphagia to solid food for last 20 days. And he also reported a few episodes of food getting stuck during the each meal. No acid reflux or heartburn or the chest pain or the chest tightness or nausea or vomiting symptoms are noticed. Now comes to approach for diagnosis. In this case, we did two investigations. Number one, contrast x-ray and number two, endoscopy, upper GI endoscopy. Now in contrast x-ray, if we look over the picture, in contrast x-ray, we can understand a fluid level just above the lower esophageal sprinter. So it indicates maybe there is a diverticulum or there is something fluid or liquid stuck over there. So in the endoscopy means the next approach, we can confirm the diagnosis it is diverticulum or something else. In next approach, in upper GI endoscopy, we confirm the diagnosis it is an esophageal diverticulum. We call it epiphrenic diverticulum. In upper GI endoscopy demonstrated no motility disorder of the esophagus and no abnormality found at the gastroesophageal junction. But there was an ostium in the lower esophageal wall which is opened into circumferential outpouching bulge at the lower third of the right esophageal wall, 35 cm from the incisor teeth with the no sign of inflammation or ulceration and no retained food was observed within the pouch. There is a ridge-like septa between pouch and esophageal lumen and the pouch is about 3 into 3 cm size. You can see very clearly endoscopic view of epiphrenic diverticulum. Now comes to management. Surgery is required for the complicated cases such as uncontrolled bleeding, medicinal perforation, fistula formation or squamous cell carcinoma. Laparoscopic surgery or Lewis operation might be the treatment of choice for large epiphrenic diverticulum. However, in non-complicated case like endoscopic minimally invasive method allow not only reduce the traumatic nature of the operation but also remarkably decrease the risk of postoperative complications. In this case, we treated by minimally invasive endoscopic approach. Under proper endoscopic guidance, diverticular septotomy was done, which showed no complications. Now, endoscopic devices used for this operation. Number one, 
therapeutic gastroscope number two endoloop number three endoclips number four injection needle number five hook knife and number six hemostatic forceps Now, post-operative follow-up. On the seventh post-operative day, the gastroscopy was done and which showed no post-operative complications. If we compare endoscopic before and after surgery, after operation by this picture, you can easily understand there is no diverticulum in here. Diverticular pouch was corrected very nicely. The operation site was healed very rapidly and the patient was discharged from the hospital in a good healthy state with no post-operative complications, no symptoms of dysphagia, nausea, vomiting or retrosternal pain. Now here is the conclusion. Non-complicated large epiphrenic esophageal diverticulum might be managed by the minimally invasive endoscopic approach which could be shorter hospital stay and considered to be safe. That's all for today. Thanks for staying with us and have a great day.